A ball is shot up from the ground straight up into the air with an initial velocity of 48 feet per second. Assuming that air resistance can be ignored, how high does the ball go? So we have the ground here and we have a ball that gets shot up in the air and then it comes back down. The question is asking us to find the height at the maximum point. And in order to do that, we need to know the time that that happens at. Now, we could look at it two ways. We could look at it in terms of the physical circumstances, and we can think about the algebra. So if we try to calculate this algebraically, what we would need to do to find this point where the tangent line is horizontal, normally what we do is we would take that function, find the derivative, set it equal to zero, and, and solve for that independent variable. And that will tell us where we have our mings and maxes or our critical points. Um, and so in this case, the function is a height function. And when we take the derivative, it would be the velocity. Now, looking at it, that was looking at it in terms of um, the algebra part of it and finding the derivative and how we would solve for that value of t where it hits the maximum point. The other way to look at it is physically what's going on. So when you think about this ball getting shot up at 48 feet per second, when it gets to the highest point, it's going to pause for a brief moment and then it's going to start to fall back down. So when that ball pauses, that means the velocity at that time is going to be zero. And this is the derivative of the height function. So the first thing we want to do is find where the velocity is equal to zero. And in order to do that, we need to find the velocity function. So we're going to start with our acceleration, we know that acceleration due to gravity in this situation would be negative 32 feet per second squared. When I use the antiderivative to work backwards to find the velocity, I would get that the velocity is negative 32 t plus some constant. Now, the problem tells us that the initial velocity is 48 feet per second. So that means if I plug in zero, I should get out 48. So I'm going to use that to find my constant. So when I plug in zero, I want to get out 48. So this tells me that my constant for the velocity is 48. So we have our velocity function. Okay, so now what we want to do, like we set up here, if I want to find the time that that ball gets to the top and hits that maximum height, I want to find the value of t when the velocity is zero. So I'm going to set this equal to zero and solve for t. When I do that, I'm going to get the t is 1.5 seconds. So at this point right here, this is when t is equal to 1.5 seconds. So all I have to do now, if I want to find that height, is I plug in 1.5 seconds into the height function and we get our height. So in order to do that, we actually need a height function. So we're going to work backwards one more time from the velocity, use the find the antiderivative, and then um, use that to find the height function. So um, we're going to get that the height function, that's the antiderivative of the velocity. So now I'm looking right here. All right, so if I take the antiderivative of the velocity, I'm going to get a negative 32 t squared divided by 2, and then plus 48 t plus c. 
Now, they don't tell us directly what the initial height is in the problem, but since we're starting at ground level and we, sh and we shoot the ball up, we can say that the initial value for the height is zero, which means this constant is going to be zero. Because if I plug in the height is zero and I want to get out zero, then that constant needs to be zero. So our height function is going to be negative 32 t squared over 2, which actually, let's simplify that as negative 16, plus 48t. So because now I want to find the height at 1.5 seconds, that will give me my maximum height, I'm going to plug in 1.5 into the height function, and I'm going to get out that the maximum height is at 36 feet.